Hey guys, Miss Sewing here, and I'm so excited to be bringing you guys your last video lesson of the year. Yes, you heard me right. This is the last week of new content before we shift gears and start studying for our star test. So let's jump into it. Our topic for the week is westward expansion, and westward expansion is pretty much what the name implies. It is the expansion or the growth of the United States westward caused by belief in manifest destiny. So if we're looking at our compass here, right, north, south, east, west, we're talking about going from the east coast, New York, Massachusetts, all that, all that fun stuff uh, on the uh, Atlantic Ocean to the west towards the Pacific Ocean, California, Oregon, Washington. And what is manifest destiny? Well, manifest destiny is this idea that was quite common at the time, that it was America's destiny, it was our mission to expand and settle the West. Manifest destiny is this idea that it was God's plan. It was our right. It was, you know, sort of divine intervention. Um, it was biblical. It was, it was faith-based. Um, this idea that, the, uh, that Americans should be, should be settling, not just on the East Coast, but the entire piece of land. What you're looking at is a famous painting called America's Progress. It's all about this idea of manifest destiny and westward expansion. So I'm going to pause and let you tackle this on your own before we discuss. Same questions as always when we look at visuals. What do you see? And then what could it mean, right? This, this artist created this piece of work for a reason. He or she is trying to uh, convince us of something. So think about that. I'm going to pause. Okay, now that you have been able to take a look at this image on your own, well, let me point out a couple of things to you. Now, we have one character in the center. It's pretty important. This lady here is an angel of sorts. Um, that's a pretty good clue here that we're talking about manifest destiny. We're talking about the, the, the biblical faith-based belief that we should go westward, and that is the direction she is traveling. Now, a couple of cool things about this painting in the background. And when we look at the background, we see a lot of industry over here. I'm seeing ships, I'm seeing trains, I'm seeing development. Um, I'm seeing in the foreground here, farmers settling the land. Uh, you might also see something I added for a little funsies. That's my addition. Um, but when we look at the West, it's a little bit more mysterious. We don't have that development. We don't have this technology because the land is not settled by Americans yet. What we have are Native Americans, indigenous people. Um, you can see that here in the background. You can see the buffalo. You can see the individual people here. Um, and they look to be on the run. They look to be leaving or fleeing or going westward as you know, the Americans are making their way towards the Pacific. Um, and you know, leading into our second question, what could it mean? Well, we're seeing westward expansion in real time, we're seeing uh, the visualization of what happens when we move west. Indigenous communities are forced to abandon their land um, as the pressure from white Americans encroach on them. So let's shift gears to how and why. Right? Why did these people just pick up and move from the east coast right over here to the west? Especially as we have, uh, this is a topographic map, by the way, so we can see elevation. Moving west is kind of dangerous, right? We hit all these mountains. Look how tall it is over here. Um, this is treacherous. This is difficult to, to move and to climb and to walk. Um, why bother trying to settle this area? So a couple reasons. Number one, there's a law that we need to be aware of called the Homestead Act. The Homestead Act gave very, very cheap land. I'm talking like a couple of dollars cheap to people who would move out west. If you would agree, if you're 21 years or older, and you would agree to farm the land for five years or more, then it was yours for dollars, right? So this meant all those people who couldn't afford land on the East Coast anymore because it was so expensive could move west. These are poor people. These are immigrants. People that just didn't have the means could now buy land. We also have a huge technological development in the transcontinental railroad. We have the railroad tracks. This is the first railroad that went east to west across basically the whole country that could, of course, help people get there, right? No one wants to climb over mountain ranges if they don't have to, right? Get on the railroad, take the train, go out west. Oh, it made stuff so much easier 
And when you're all the way out there in the middle of nowhere, you can use the, as a farmer, you can use the railroads to sell food to, uh, to people who need it. So let's take a few minutes to talk about the impact of what happens when white people move west. Well, first, of course, we have a huge impact on the Native American communities as people are moving westward. That leaves less and less land for uh, the indigenous communities that were here first. And we want to pay attention to one law in particular that had a pretty devastating effect. Uh, it's called the Dawes Act. And what the Dawes Act did was take land away from Native Americans. This was shared tribal lands. Native American tribes at this time, many of them didn't look at private property as like a thing like we do here. Um, land cannot be owned, land is shared. And so this really forced them to live under our, and by our, I mean, you know, white people's view of private property. They also forced Native Americans to assimilate into white culture. And assimilate's a word you may not have um, seen before, but it really just means to make similar. So basically this was white Americans saying, you need to look and act like white people. And the image you see on your screen is, is assimilation. We have uh, a person on the left who is very distinctly Native American. There's a lot of you know, culture here in this photograph. And the guy on the right is the same person. It doesn't look like it, right? At first glance, you're like, that's, those are two different people. Um, the lighting is a little weird. It kind of looks like two different colors, skin tones, but it's not. This is the same man who is forced to dress and, and present himself um, as a white person. Um, this is obviously just destroying culture and um, identity. The last thing I want to cover today is the growth of nativism in the United States. So nativism just simply means anti-immigrant feeling or discrimination. And so we see a lot of anti-immigrant policies and reactions during the time period of westward expansion. I want to focus on one of those right now. That is the Chinese Exclusion Act. So the Chinese Exclusion Act specifically banned Chinese labor from the United States. And, and this is very important for a number of reasons. Uh, the first is we relied on the Chinese to build the railroads. We, we use Chinese immigrant labor to construct our railroads. And then once they were done and built, we looked around and saw that there was some unemployment issues happening in the West uh, for white people specifically. And so the United States, it's a very similar story, right? They, they blamed Chinese immigrants and they went ahead and passed this law, making it illegal for uh, people from China to immigrate. This is very important because it is actually the first time we have ever banned people from immigrating to the United States. This is the first law ever put into place restricting who comes to the United States. The last thing I want you guys to do today is take a look at this political cartoon. We're gonna use our normal, what do you see? What does it mean to dissect this image a little bit? And of course you will put your answers in on Pear Deck. Thanks for listening guys. This is again, the last video lesson of the entire year. I am um, so proud of you guys for getting here. This has been quite a ride. Um, so I look forward to seeing you guys in Zoom and take care.